In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to the Parish Church of St. John the Divine here in Horninglow. And um, you'll be able to follow the service quite easily by shutting your eyes or, or looking at something pleasant, or someone pleasant perhaps, and um, letting it flow over you. Or you may have the order before you, I don't know. The main thing is that we come to do what Jesus asked us to do, taught us to do, in remembrance of him. To take bread, to take wine, to give thanksgiving um, over his body and blood. So we do that, and to prepare ourselves for that, we ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters, my brothers in Christ. Let us bring to God ourselves as we are, with all our strengths, all our weaknesses, Father, in the beginning, you created the world with wonder and made us in your image. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Father, in the fullness of time, you sent your Son, born of Mary, to walk among us and to raise us up in love, in hope and in forgiveness. 
Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Father, in these our days, you entrust to us, your family, the Church, the same gifts of love and hope and forgiveness. Help us to use them well within your family and within the community. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is not any God beside you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all, cause, over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, 
and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have, felt, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's nice to go away, they say, but it's very good to come home. That's not really a, a sort of parable for me, but it's... Um, it's what my mother used to say, ad nauseam. <laughs> it's true, of course, mothers are always right, aren't they, in the end? 
It's true until you get to the garden. Now, no sane person would ever call me a gardener, but I do, I do mow lawns. I do so on the principle that mowing, I believe, refines the coarsest weeds into an immaculate lawn. You just have to do it for about two to three hundred years. Leave mine a few weeks and stuff comes to light that is more at home in science fiction. Some enemy has done this, I think. Seems a very appropriate text from today's gospel of the parable of the good seed growing together with the alien grasses. I looked up the Greek, this is just to impress you, of course, you won't be impressed, but um, the Greek is tarzitsana, which sounds the sort of stuff that if you could get an appointment with your doctor, you would immediately go and say, I've got this outcrop of zitsana, and uh, can you do anything about it? It sounds quite toxic. Now, Jesus was a good teacher, and his method was often that of the parable. Parables are simple, or simply what you think they might be, and what they sound like. Simple, direct, parallel illustrations. Very often, more often than not, we might think, the most effective way to understanding and realization is not a direct approach, but almost out of the corner of your eye stuff, inspirationally. Suddenly the penny drops, as they used to say. I wondered how many truths have come to light in this surprisingly low-key parallel, parabolic approach. I wonder if you can think of any, I've thought of some. I thought of Isaac Newton, who in the year of the plague in 1666 was sent away from Cambridge because of the plague. Not in the way most of us are sent down from university, but he was sent because um, of the plague. And he, at um, Woolsthorpe Manor, um, was sitting under his um, apple tree, as you all know. And this is the limit of my um, O-level physics, I can tell you. Um, an apple dropped down and he discovered um, what we all know as gravity. And he extended this in some way so that he could see there were reasons why things were happening in the heavens with the planets. So much so that um, he knew that somewhere out there in the far distance where he couldn't possibly see with the stuff he had, that there was something that was causing disturbance to some other planets. And then 200 years later in Belgium, they discovered it and it turned out to be Neptune. Then there was the Russian chemist, Dmitry Mendeleev, saw emerging patterns in what it came to be known as the periodic table, all those elements. He didn't know them all, of course, but he knew there were spaces, and so extrapolated, I suppose you'd say. He could see, almost out of the corner of his eye, that there ought to be something there, and always there was. There's a chap called Peter Higgs who gave his name to the higgs boson particle that's going around or something he's doing under the, under the, uh, in the Swiss Alps or something. Um, suddenly got inspired on that walking in the Cairngorms. And as a result of that, they've got the Large Hadron Collider and the higgs boson particle. Ask someone else what it does, I don't know. Watson and Crick incited into DNA. They suddenly thought, well, I wonder if it goes this way. And they discovered 
a sort of double helix thing. And they made it almost out of um, these straws and things that children have. And um, lo and behold, it worked. And so we've got all these lovely um, detectives that we can watch on television where they solve the problem because there's DNA. Who else have I got? Well, I've got Agatha Christie, of course, who solved all her problems by looking out of a window, twitching the net curtains and looking at what happened in Mary Mead and then saying, well, it happens there with the butcher, it must happen here um, with this mass murderer. So all these things happen almost out of the corner of your eye. You think it must happen like that. I've forgotten where I'm going actually, but I was actually interested to see. <laughs> so it was, it says here, so it was that Jesus taught deep, difficult theological truths. He taught them to his disciples by taking them into the countryside and getting them to consider, say, the lilies of the field or the simple sparrow, or as in today's example, the good and the bad and the ugly in the seed world. And that is what he's doing, considering the coexistence, I think, of good and evil. The Scottish philosopher David Hume had an insuperable problem with the idea of a God who could permit the coexistence of suffering and of goodness. And of course, he's not alone. It's often the most cogent argument people muster against the existence of God. How can there be a God if X, Y, Z? But this parable, I reckon, this parable of the mixed crop, the good and the toxic, is a parable of reality, of how it is, of how, if I'm honest, how I am. And a good God in a good world, I don't think, is enfeebled nor denied by the coexistence of suffering. If we approach the problem tangentially by way of another parable, namely that of the family, we might understand it a bit better. Now a family is a lovely idea in theory, comforting, loving and supportive. But if cost and if difficulty are added to the mix, as you are obliged to do, considering the high risk of heartache and sleepless nights. Then, to quote John McEnroe, you cannot be serious. But we are serious, knowing with certainty that the family that makes no demands and where it is all profit and, and no cost does not exist. Furthermore, we wouldn't believe it if it did, or want it if it did, though sometimes it might look attractive. We wouldn't because, we wouldn't believe it because of the cost of love, which we understand. We know love costs us. So then in the end, we believe in the mixed field. We actually do expect our life to have a share of toxicity. Just as our faith focus on the crucifixion, just as the climate of our the climax of our worship is the broken body and the sacrificial blood of the Eucharist, the field containing good and evil is both a profound and a grown-up parable. No enemy has done this really, I don't think. No enemy. Just God. 
so too has God allowed good and evil to coexist within you and me, within our very selves. We too have to live with a rather toxic mix, or at least I do, and perhaps leave it to the divine gardener to do the pruning and to do the mowing and to get us into shape. For he is a merciful cultivator of his creation and chooses not to practice cancellation culture. Thank him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Gracious Lord, you are full of compassion, kindness and truth. Grant us, we pray, the strength to resist evil, the ability to distinguish good seed from bad, and the capacity to listen to you at all times. May our hope be in you, our trust in your Son, and our inspiration be your Holy Spirit. May we be children of God in your eyes, keen to grow in faith and ready to learn. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the state of your church, its leaders and congregations, and its mission and message. May our own church benefit from the resources it has, and may we use these wisely <coughs> and properly to your glory and for the good of future generations. As the current vacancy continues, we give thanks for the efforts of all who are keeping the life and worship of our church going. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we wonder at the sheer beauty of your creation, let us acknowledge our failings of stewardship and help us all to meet our responsibilities towards our environment. <clears throat> 
We pray that those in positions of power and authority will urgently find a way to put into practice all their good intentions about how to deal with climate change. Your son showed us the way to care for our neighbor. So, we may, so may we show the same respect for your creation as we pray for all those people affected by recent and ongoing extremes of weather. Lord, in your mercy. In our own community, we pray for everyone about to finish school, to go on to higher or further education or into jobs. And also those children who will be changing schools next term. We also pray for reconciliation in the ongoing disputes in our public services, so that those who use these services are again able to have their needs met. We continue to pray for the funding to complete the Red Lion House development plan. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the recovery of those who are sick in mind, body or spirit, remembering especially Jean Hodgkins, Jim Deakin, Betty Bourne, Peter Booth, Seth Taylor, <coughs> Barry, Gordon Smith, June, Pam, Amy Wright, Richard, Rob, Andrew, Terry, Patricia, Ellie Palm, and Pat. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died and are now with you in your internal kingdom and let hope replace the tears as fond memories of loved ones are shared by family and friends. We remember also those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Martin Kilner, Edith Coles, Carl Richardson, and Rod Ronald Drury. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace, Amen. Joining our prayers with those of Our Lady, St. John the Divine, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit and the all that shines in the one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. So we have one another to sign.
my sisters and brothers in Christ, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us upon the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith.
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Divine, St. Paul the Apostle, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words Jesus gave us. We are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. The body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep me in eternal life.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share in his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Um, before I get to the notices as such, I am very pleased to be able to announce that after interviews earlier this week, the Bishop has appointed the Reverend Simon Archer, currently team vicar in the Kidderminster Ismere team ministry in the Diocese of Worcester, to be the new vicar of Hornilow and priest in charge of St. Aidan and St. Paul, Burton. Just to clarify, he will automatically become the vicar of the new joint benefice when the legal process to set this up is completed in due course. Simon will join us in the autumn and the initial thought is that this could be around the second half of October, but this is yet to be confirmed. We are asked to remember Simon and his wife Jane in our prayers as they prepare to join us. Moving on to the mundane. The notices are as usual on the bulletin, uh, PCC on Monday, prayers for the parish Tuesday, bell ringing practice Wednesday, Red Lion House coffee and cake on Saturday, coffee, cake, no, coffee, biscuits, tea and etc. in Red Lion House immediately after this service. And I'd like to offer our thanks to Father Philip for presiding and preaching, and I shall go home and look at our lawn with new eyes. <laughs> I haven't yet made the connection between the state of the lawn and Agatha Christie, but I'm working on that. <laughs> uh, and that leads us to the final hymn, which is number 364.
congratulations. That's very good news indeed. Um, congratulations to those who um, did the interviewing, to those who did the welcoming, to those who fed, um, amongst others, the Archdeacon, always needs good food, and um, made it so welcome. But chiefly, congratulations to yourselves, um, and to St Paul's, of course, um, on being the sort of place someone wants to come. So as um, Charles has said, do remember Father Simon and Jane in, in your prayers and um, be very glad that um, the decision has been made and the um, coming will be quite soon in terms, that, um, in, in, in relative terms. So thank you. Good. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.